Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about a very very important topic that is PNH, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. Whenever you get a patient or a case or a question where it is there that the first morning urine sample is black. you always think about PNH. The patient will come and say or the question will say that the first morning urine sample is black, but when the patient passes urine in the daytime, then the urine is clear. That is the classical presentation of this case. Now, what is the pathophysiology? It is an acquired stem cell. First of all, it is an acquired disease. It is stem cell disorder. That is why all the three cell lineage that is RBC, WBC and platelet are involved. Somatic mutation, it is a mutation after birth. That is why we say it is a acquired defect. Okay. Now, where is the mutation? Mutation occur in PIGA. What is this? Phosphatidyl anustol glycan A. And it is a intrinsic defect is there. Now, what is the defect? What happened in these patients? There is decreased anchor protein GPI. Let us learn more about GPI. This is the cell, blood cell, maybe RBC maybe WBC or maybe platelet. So, now this is GPI anchor protein anchor protein. What is what is its normal function? It attaches C D 55 or C D 59 it anchors these to the cell, blood cell, RBC, WBC or platelet. Now, what are these? These two are complement inhibitors. This is the complement. This is the complement. Okay. C for complement. Now, it they are the inhibitor of complement that is why lysis of the cell cannot occur. This is the normal. Now, what happened in PNH? This GPI is not there. Its anchor protein is not there. When the anchor protein is not there, then obviously, this inhibitor will not be there, then the, then the picture will become like this. Okay. Blood vessel, here is the cell and here is the complement. There is no GPI and there is no inhibitors. So, these are not there. So, it is a bland cell. Cell is totally bland. Now, this complement can come and make activate MAC. MAC is membrane activating complex and they lead to lysis of the cells. So, as all the three cell lineage are destroyed, that lead to pancytopenia, that lead to pancytopenia. As the hemolysis is occurring in the blood vessel itself, so we get intravascular hemolytic anemia and as the intravascular hemolytic anemia is there, that lead to hemoglobin urea hemoglobin urea and that lead to dark color or black color of urine in the morning. But the million dollar question is that why it happen only at night? The reason being this complement they are activated in the acidic media, acidic media. So, at night when we sleep we all have a 
hypoventilation. So, we tend to retain some amount of CO2, this happens with everybody. So, at night, everybody has a mild respiratory acidosis. So, that lead to acidic media in the blood, complement is activated, hemolysis occur and you get first morning urine sample black because of hemoglobin urea. But at day time, this hypoventilation is not there, acidic media is not there, so hemolysis does not occur. Okay. This is how what, the, what we get is first morning urine sample black. Now, one, one more thing, point we noted, although pancytopenia is there in the peripheral smear, but the bone marrow is hypercellular. Okay. So, in this condition, we have got, if you go for bone marrow examination, which is normally not required, you are getting hypercellular marrow. But one more thing, we can increase thrombosis, something very unusual. Remember, there is pancytopenia, even the platelet count is reduced, but still we have increased clot formation. Why? Because when the pla platelet are broken down, suppose this is the platelet broken down, that causes release of ADP. So, destroyed platelet they cause release of ADP, ADP is a platelet aggregator. So, that lead to aggregation of other platelets which are not broken yet and that lead to clot formation. This clot can occur in both artery and vein. Okay. Because of venous clot formation, of course, anywhere in the body, but the usual cause, most common cause of death in these patients is cortical vein thrombosis and pain abdomen can occur due to any of the arterial involvement in the abdomen. But remember, the clot formation can occur in all artery and vein, of course, venous is much more as compared to arterial. But one thing I like to add, sir. here we are getting pan cytopenia or thrombocytopenia with increased clot formation. We have one more another important condition, HIT, HIT stands for heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So, in heparin induced thrombocytopenia also, which is uh, the, uh, the cause of thrombocytopenia is autoimmune. All the uh, plated count is low, but there is increased clot formation in both artery and vein, and there also bone marrow is hypercellular. So, this is what the additional knowledge for your kind information. So, now you are clear about it ki why thrombosis occur at night. Now, what happened to LAP score? LAP score is reduced. This is a very important point to note it. Another condition where LAP is, is score is reduced is chronic myelite leukemia. So, now what is the triad of this? The triad of PNH is pancytopenia, venous thrombosis and Coombs negative hemolytic anemia. There are no autoantibodies involved, so it is a Coombs negative autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Now, what complication can occur other than this, acute myeloid leukemia can occur in around 10 percent cases and there can be aplastic anemia or aplastic crisis can occur in this patient. Now, patient may manifest as acute hemolytic anemia or sometime patient may come with chronic hemolytic anemia also. Whenever you are thinking about the PNH, best initial test as well as the most accurate test is always investigation flow cytometry. The flow cytometry detects deficiency of CD 55, this is also known as DAF, decay accelerating factor and this also detect deficiency of CD 59, which are also known as MIRL. So, it detect 
the CD55 and CD59 deficiency is the best test. Previously, we were doing HEMS test or sucrose lysine test, but these are obsolete tests, it's, they are not done. So, we talk only about the flow cytometry. Well, the patient has come with acute hemolysis. He come with the first wall injury in sample black is hemolysis going on. Then in the treatment, the best initial treatment will be prednisolone. This is to stop ongoing hemolysis. And later on for preventive, for prevention of hemolysis we give aculizumab and it is a complement inhibitor. Then for to prevent the venous thrombosis, we use also use anticoagulant, but the best treatment is always bone marrow transplantation. This is all about PNH. Thank you very much.